There are a number of propositions on this year's ballot, crime and punishment, housing and homelessness. Those are just some of the issues that voters will get a chance to weigh in on. And Prop 5, that's a big one. It is hugely consequential, and the ripple effect of it passing or failing is going to be felt for years. It would change how many votes it would take for a community to pass a bond, in essence, a tax for affordable housing and infrastructure projects. You got to take what you can get. I mean, if you want to be out of the rain. This is not where most of us would want to spend even one winter night, let alone the winter of our years. Well, I haven't had a place in years, my own place. But for Dave, who turned 68 this month, this is home a tent on the banks of Coyote Creek in San Jose. Dave says he ended up here because he can't afford to live anywhere else. The end game is getting people into housing, and I think most politicians agree with that, conservative or liberal. Pastor Scott Wagers is a homeless advocate and supports Prop 5, which would make it easier to pass bond measures for affordable housing and infrastructure projects. The unhoused crisis has caused the quality of life to come down for everybody. So I think the investment that the average voter has in solving the problem of getting them into housing, even if it means them being taxed a little more, is that you're going to have a better city. Prop 5 would fundamentally change how communities decide to tax themselves, rewriting California's constitution to lower the threshold needed to pass bond measures from a two-thirds majority, or roughly 67 percent, down to 55. We can't keep taxing and taxing and taxing and saying we're concerned about the cost of living because every tax raises the cost of living. Former San Jose City Councilman Johnny Camus is a fiscal conservative and fears that home and business owners would be saddled with an ever-growing list of new taxes if Prompt 5 passed. Because bonds are paid over a 30-year period, what you're actually doing is putting the tax burden on future generations. And it's unfair to have a simple majority or even 55% as a consensus. We should be building a much higher consensus to pass new taxes. Opponents of Prop 5 say even though its goal is to address the lack of affordable housing statewide, they're concerned it may actually have the opposite effect. The more property taxes go up along with everything else, the more likely I am to raise my rent. And so that's not good for them and it's not good for me. Roberta Moore owns a small apartment complex and is far from convinced that giving the government more money will solve the problem. My concern is people will vote for it because they only look at the objectives. They don't know the unintended consequences and they don't know how poorly the government implements on its programs. But Pastor Wagers, who's seen the state's homeless crisis worsen, says there's a price to inaction as well. When you do put them in housing and you got money for housing, that's the solution, and I, I would challenge anyone to come tell me why it's not the solution. It's now up to voters to decide how they want to come up with the money to address pressing issues like homelessness, affordable housing, and infrastructure. But for homeless men and women like Dave, they say they are often overtaxed by the daily demands of surviving on the streets. It's murder, dude. <laughs> Serious murder. Because every night, I, I don't sleep. I, I don't sleep good. All right, so this is a bit wonkish, but it is important for context. Prop 5 only needs 50% plus one vote to pass. That is actually less than the 55% that would be required to pass local bonds under Prop 5.